You've been hired part time to work at a construction company. You're being paid $16 an hour and filling in where needed. Each day you could be working a different amount of hours. So if somebody asked you what you're going to be making on a particular day, well, you'd have to tell them if I work one hour, then I get paid $16. If I work two hours, then I get paid sixteen times two or thirty two dollars. If I work three hours, then I get paid sixteen times three or forty eight dollars. And on and on. And being smart, you figure out that you could just clarify this relationship with a simple equation. That is, my pay equals sixteen times the number of hours worked. Your pay rate is a constant, that is, It doesn't change. The 16 stays 16 no matter what the day. But your number of hours is variable. That means not constant. It can vary. Some days your number of hours might be three hours, while other days it could be six hours. It varies. Thus, in our equation, the number of hours worked is your variable. It's often handy to express a relationship. With an equation like this, it helps us explain things to others. Often, we don't write our variable quite like this, that is, so long, we usually make it nice and short and even easier to read. Thus, a variable is often represented by a single letter. In our case, that letter could be H for hours, or maybe T for the time spent working. Either is fine. And in a math class, the most common variable you'll see is x and sometimes y. Now, you'll notice in the third one, we got rid of the multiplication sign. This is because an x and a multiplication sign would have looked kind of confusing sitting beside each other. As you'll notice, it's quite common to start removing the multiplication signs as you get higher in math. If you see two things written side by side like this, the 16 and the x, you can assume that it means they're being multiplied. Let's consider another situation where we might find variables useful. Your friend says, I had $13 earlier, and then you gave me a handful of money, and now I have $27. How much did you give me? Well, we can replace an unknown value with a letter or variable until we know what it actually is. So we can say 13 plus x equals 27. If we want to think about what the unknown x is. It's just a really smart way of summing up a problem. Nice and clear and easy to read. 13, what we had earlier, plus what, that's our unknown, so we put a variable there, is 27, what we have now. Most people would find that a nice, easy-to-read summary of the problem and consider you smart for representing it that way and solve it easily. In this tutorial, we looked at two common ways to use variables to simplify a thought process. If you are looking at a relationship where one of the parts is going to vary, such as when you're figuring out a way to calculate your daily wages, when the number of hours you work is going to vary, we can show this relationship as an equation. Another way to use a variable is if we're trying to solve a problem, and we can replace our unknown with a variable until we figure it out. This is a common way to sum up a problem, to make it easier to visualize and solve. Either way, using variables is an effective tool for being able to communicate and solve problems.